in the 207 Kitchen here at Omain Studios. I am with Alex White, who is from the Crown Jewel on Great Diamond Island. Thanks so much for coming in and cooking with us. We are back in the 207 Kitchen here at Omain Studios. I am with Alex White, who is from the Crown Jewel on Great Diamond Island. Thanks so much for coming in and cooking with us today. And today we're making grilled edamame with a bit of a main twist. Yeah, we are. So our executive chef, Juan Pacheco, is from Mexico. And we try to highlight our menu with Mexican ingredients. Um, this is a play off of a Mexican street corn, mm. but instead of corn, we're using edamame and throwing in some lobster because yeah, we're in Maine. Exactly. All right, so where do we start? Uh, well, we're going to heat up the pan, and one of the great things about this recipe for a home cook is that we're using cooked lobster meat. So the first step is to get the pan hot. Um, we're not going to be cooking the lobster and edamame for long. The edamame and the lobster is just gonna get a quick hit. So we're not looking to keep this in the pan for a terribly long time. You're looking for a little bit of color and just to make sure that everything is warmed through. Usually just a couple minutes is fine. It's the beauty of using cooked lobster meat, mm -hmm. right? No mess, no fuss, moment or two to get hot. We're going to take it off the heat and put it into a mixing bowl and mix in the other really delicious ingredients here. So like I said, this is a play off of Mexican street corn. One of the uh, most important ingredients is cotija cheese, which can be found at your grocery store. I've never heard of this cheese before. Yeah, it's really mild. It's not overpowering, but adds kind of like a creamy element to it. Um, we're also going to add some spice here. This is sort of a proprietary blend at Crown Jewel, but you can use paprika, cayenne, chili pepper, whatever you have in your pantry works just fine. And it's just to give it a little bit of heat. Mm. We've got some QP mayo. This is a little bit more uncommon, but we're using chopped cilantro stems. Um, Interesting. Yeah, this is in an effort to have as little waste as possible in our kitchen. Um, it adds a crunch, but we actually compost um, over 90% of our waste directly on the island. Wow. We have a chief composting officer his name is Kinio Summers. He lives on the island and has been working with us for three years. Wow. He is going to be a senior at Waynefleet in Portland. Very cool. Yeah. And he's already got that kind of title? That's impressive. Right? <laughs> Pretty good for a 17-year-old. I'm just adding a little bit of lime to offset the fat from the cheese and okay. the QP mayo. And the last hits that this gets um, is a little bit of crunchy. So we take panko and we fry it in chorizo oil, Ooh. but you can take regular panko and toast it in olive oil, um, in butter, whatever works for you. We like the color that the chorizo gives the panko. Yeah, it's pretty. And this gives it a nice crunch and then top it off with some fresh micro cilantro just to really infuse it with some nice herbaceous qualities that looks good and that's it 
I love it. A little taste in Maine, a little taste in Mexico. All on a plate. Yeah. Love it so much. Thanks so much for teaching us how to make this. Thanks for having me. Of course. And if you want to make this recipe for yourself, just head to the 207 section of our website or our app. And don't go anywhere. We've got more 207 for you right after this.